One launch. Rockets are cool, like really cool. And I want to build them. Whilst I may not have a great track record with building planes, I have had some experience with building rockets before. So hopefully these ones won't fail as badly. The goal of this development series is to have an active guided rocket that can land, like the ones in BPS Spaces program. But doing that right off the bat is really tricky and I don't really have the skill set at all to do that right now. So in this video, I'm gonna start a lot smaller and just aim for my level one rocketry set, which allows me to fly high powered rocket motors and gives me a bit of a goal to work towards. Shortly after that catastrophe that was the plane, I decided to make a small little rocket called Nova. I had built some kit builds when I was younger, but this was my first scratch build. But to be honest, building a mod rocket is actually fairly simple, especially when the most technical bit, which is the motor, which sends you into the sky, is already available off the shelf and is very, very reliable. All you really have to do as a rocket designer is to ensure that the center of mass is before the center of pressure. But what does this really mean? Well, the center of mass is an approximation of the rocket's weight. If you put your finger at this point, the rocket will be perfectly balanced. The center of pressure is an approximation of where all the aerodynamic forces act. If you hold your finger here and blow air, it'll rotate around this point. All a rocket fundamentally is, is just a very carefully balancing act between these two forces. As it flies through the air, wind and other forces push on the rocket, which rotates it around its center of mass. The center of pressure must be far enough away to counteract these forces and restore the rocket to a straight flight. Of course, this can get a lot more complicated the faster and higher you go and as the forces get stronger, but and now it's a good enough model. So, back to Nova. This was a tiny little rocket and really designed to give me confidence in building my own. I didn't really try to make it tricky or technical and didn't really record too much footage of it either. It was made out of various pieces of cardboard and balsa wood and the simulations in Open Rocket gave it an optimistic altitude of around 200 meters. The most exciting part of the process was aligning the fins. I 3D printed a fin jig which would perfectly line up the fins on the body of the tube. If your fins are just a tiny bit out, the rocket can start spiraling out of control, which isn't really ideal. Everything was all glued together with PVA glue, and after a few days of work, I had a rocket. I also built a fairly rudimentary launch stand out of some scrap wood and a metal rod shoved into it. The launch controller was also fairly basic, and was basically just two 9 volt batteries wired in series to a switch, which would light the motor. Everything was a pretty rough build. I just wanted to build something. And so I took it to my local park for a test flight. In five, four, three, two, one, ignition. And it worked amazingly well. I mean, I can't believe I actually made something that worked. After a short break, I started working on two more rockets, VEX-1 and VEX-2. Now, there's something to realize about rockets. They, they can go high, like really high. Nova was launched at the biggest park near me on the smallest rocket motor I could find, and it still nearly drifted onto the road. Whilst originally I was hoping to launch VEX-1 at that same park and learn from it and then use that to build VEX-2 as my certification flight, I very quickly realised after launching Nova that <clears throat> this was not feasible at all. To make matters worse, my local rocketry club was having the last launch of its season in four weeks, so I had two choices. I could either build one rocket as my certification attempt and just send it, or build two for some reason and launch both on the same day. I rather foolishly chose the second option, and I'm still not really sure why to be honest but hey, I had twice the amount of rockets to launch. VEX-1 was largely built with the same techniques as Nova, but with one key difference. The fins were placed through the wall. This is quite a common technique for high-powered rocketry, as the aerodynamic forces on surface-mounted fins can very easily rip them off. I wanted to try out this technique and learn from any mistakes before working on the fancy certification attempt rocket. All you really need to do is mark and cut the slot on the main body tube for the fins, push them through and then glue them in. The hardest part is ensuring that they're still aligned. Once the fins are attached, a small fillet of glue is made, and this is to spread out any forces to the body tube over a smoother angle. Thankfully for VEX-1, no real problems came from any part of the design process, except for the very botched spray paint job. With that entire build done in a week, that now left three weeks to design, build, and finish my certification rocket from scratch. Thankfully, I have a good family friend who was able to loan me a lot of parts and provide guidance on building this rocket, which I cannot thank him enough for. However, this also meant that I was left with quite a large mismatch of parts. Combined with the very short time frame, this resulted in a very, very DIY looking rocket. The main body tube was made from fiberglass, which was then coupled with a phenolic body tube to bring the center of mass further forward. Again, there was no real design reason for these materials. They were just laying around and were probably quite overpowered for a level one attempt. However, which we'll see later on, this might've been quite beneficial. To cut the fiberglass down to the length required me using a tool that scares me the most a Dremel. 
This thing is terrifying. It is so easy to just slip or drop it and ta-da, no more fingers. But with the tubes now cut down and epoxied together, the motor tube was also worked on and attached. Now, I haven't really spoken about it much, but the motor tube does exactly as its name suggests, holds the motor in the rocket. We can see on some of the smaller scale rockets how it sits, with two centering rings, or up to three, are placed around this middle of this motor tube, and then that makes sure it sits perfectly aligned in the body tube. We also attach a shock cord to the centering ring, and this is what attaches that parachute and nose cone to the rocket when it gets to the top and needs to come back safely. For Nova and VEX-1, I attached a shock cord with glue to the side. For VEX-2, I didn't want to take any attaches and secured it to the centering ring. Definitely overbuilt this rocket, but again, it was worth it, you'll, you'll see. Once the motor tube was done, it was glued in and the slots for the fins were cut out. Soon after, the fins were glued to the motor tube and the epoxy delay was poured around the wings. I like the PVA glue on VEX-1. Epoxy tends to you know, be just a little bit stronger and so needs to be cut down and sanded to shape once it's hard. Once all this was done, the fins were wrapped in a layer of carbon fibre to ensure no failure would happen during the fight. This was quite a therapeutic process, especially when I got to cut it down to shape. Although the sharp bits of carbon fibre that kept flinging it into my face and arms was not quite as nice. After all this was done, I finally had a rocket, and a very strong one at that. All that was left to do was to paint it, insert the launch button so the rocket can sit on the rail, realise you didn't really line up those launch buttons very well the first time but you've just epoxied them to the body tube, very quickly take those launch buttons out, line them up again, drill them in again, and then still realise they're still out of alignment, so it's probably not going to sit on the launch rail, but the epoxy's dried, so it's too late to do it now. I mean, it's it slid on the rail, I mean, it worked. Once your rocket's all built, you also have to add some weight to the nose cone to help bring the centre of mass forward and make sure the rocket's actually stable. Now, you tend to do this, you know, before you head down to the launch site to uh, put it on the up for launch and you don't sort of wake up in the morning and remember it hasn't been done and now spend half an hour worrying about whether it's going to dry before you get down there, but it's, it's fine. Technical details. There were several really cool rockets launched in the day, including two hybrid rockets, which sounded amazing. And then there was me with my little half-built nasty looking rocket getting ready for launch. After about an hour of trying to get that motor in and struggling to push it past the motor retainer, where I think I maybe have spilt some epoxy down there. The rocket was finally vertical on the pad. It was running an H550 motor, which Open Rocket estimated to go up to a kilometre in the air, which was, I was so excited. Five, four, three, two, one, launch. Ooh. Of course the only motor failure during the day was my rocket. It was rather impressive too. The first grain block completely exploded, the second one ignited and burnt through one of the very, very thick cables on the launch pad, and the third grain block was basically ejected all the way through the top of the rocket and I found it lying on the field. I expect it probably failed because of improper storage. I mean, if you look at the third grain which was ejected, you can see these massive cracks in it which would cause an explosion. Thankfully though, because that rocket was so overbuilt, nothing was really actually damaged. The coupled section tore in half and blew off, but that was pretty much the extent of the damage and was really easy of a fix. The motor tube, the fins, the fiberglass body tube, perfectly fine. I mean, you wouldn't even know it had exploded. And so with the permission of the range safety officer, I basically just re-glued that coupler section back in and we were allowed to fly again. The only problem was the epoxy took two to three hours to set and eight hours to reach maximum strength. After I'd glued that epoxy section back on, there was only about an hour left in the day before I wouldn't be able to launch again. So I pretty much was just standing next to it, praying it would cure in time. Whilst I waited for it to set, I tried launching VEX-1 to moderate success. Five, four, three, two, one, launch. Yay! It took three unsuccessful attempts for the motor to actually ignite and fire, and I am fully blaming the SSC's igniters here. They were basically incredibly flimsy, and I broke about three of them walking out to the pad oh, with them. On. And every time I looked to see why the motor wasn't firing, it was basically the igniter had broken rather than burning through. Launch though, it launched well. Completely stable with no oscillations, which is what we like to see. I mean, recovery was a bit questionable because the parachute didn't really deploy, but it's in one piece, that's what matters. It was now time to launch VEX-2 again. This time I used a much less powerful motor, an H100 to reduce the chance of basically that coupler going whoomp again. The epoxy was still quite sticky when I put it vertical on the mad, but just gotta send it sometimes. Five, four, three, two, one, launch. Oh, it's... It worked, perfectly. I mean, almost perfectly. 
The motor had a 14 second delay in it, but the rocket reached max altitude about eight seconds after burnout. Basically, this meant that it was six seconds before that parachute was deployed and it was in free fall missile descent for a very, very terrifying six seconds. And you know, normally when that happens, the parachute has a good chance of just ripping off, but it, it didn't, it didn't. So I love this rocket, it works so well. Overall, this was a very fun experience and I'm both glad and impressed that all the rockets I built actually worked well with no major failures. The next step in this program is to start making a flight computer. Given it is moving to summer here, finding a place to launch may be tricky and it may be a bit of a long development time, but I guess we're just gonna, gonna terrorize that local park. Until next time, bye.